This is Joseph Coco. I'm at Comic Con 2016 on behalf of Becca Hilburn's Art Process blog and YouTube channel, Natto Soup. If you could introduce yourself, please. Hi, I'm Harper with Hatcore.com. Okay, Harper, and what's bringing you to Comic Con this year? Well, this is year seven in the Artist Alley for Comic Con, um, and we just love the show. Really, really nice people here in Alabama, and it's a great and profitable show for us to do as a business. Okay. And how have people responded to your wares? I assume you add new designs every year, so um, do you find that people look at your booth and they say, okay, well, I bought a hat from them previously, or is it something like they're excited to check out all the new designs you have and that sort of thing? Um, well, I'd say a little bit of both. Uh, what we do at this point is try to be really, really innovative with our designs, push ourselves to make designs that are harder and maybe stuff that we couldn't even do a few years ago. But um, as far as response from our customers, we, we call them collectors <laughs> because right. that means they have five pieces or more. Right. Uh, and most of our fans at this point are in that category. So they right. buy Repeat one every customers. year awesome. and they are coming by and looking for the new designs that we've added for that particular year. But at some point, they've seen it all. Yeah. Or they've either asked for what they want, so then we transition so them into a custom order. Yeah. So everything we do then is not, is not something that's pre-made, it's something I ship to you, we work back and forth, you know, do a mock-up, work within your budget kind of stuff. Okay. And I take it you know what to expect from Comic-Con. How much has it changed over the years as you've been coming here? Oh Have you gone goodness. consecutively or you skipped yes. a couple of years? Yeah, so this is year eight for Comic-Con. I've been here for seven years. Right. Um, at the very beginning, it, uh, it started off a lot like Momocon in that it was a convention at a college, so at the Student Center and uh, in Tuscaloosa. So because we did Momocon and that's our local show in Atlanta, I thought, well, you know, this is something that could work. The same formula could work in another state. Yeah. And so that's why we tried out Comic-Con the first year. And at the Student Center that year, it was the kids visit college with their parents to find out if they like it or not okay. here. And so we did very, very well. Uh, it was fantastic to see another show with that formula working well. And, and now, now that we're in year eight, you know, we're in a big convention center yeah. in a big city in Birmingham. And it's just grown. It feels like there's even more people here than ever before. I don't know official numbers, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna suspect <laughs> probably another thousand people up from last year or more. Sure. Yeah, I know some people from staff, and they've been saying uh, things have been running pretty smoothly mm -hmm. in terms of attendance and that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm so. not surprised. It looked packed. Yeah. It's hard to conceptualize how many people are there when you're stuck behind a booth. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's but when you walk space, outside, artists Alley and the dealers room are together. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of, do you find that that hurts your sales? Because <laughs> I understand you make all your your hats by hand. Yeah. Correct? Okay. And everything is hand sewn, or you use oh, no. a combination of machines? No, and everything is machine sewn so oh, they okay. say handmade machine sewn but right. that way we have the ability to actually get Produce thousands of stitches in them and sure. so every hat does this yeah and it's not going to come apart right you don't hear any popping of the stitches and that also means that it's going to stretch to fit everybody's head sure um, so, but what I was getting at is, uh, you have so many different designs that it can begin to look a little bit more like a dealer, even though you are um, conceptualizing things by hand. It's your own designs. Yeah, that, um, that has, happens has a that lot. Become a, has that become a problem for you with the artist alley and dealer's room in the same? It's not in the same area, but it's in the same room. Well. You know, I do more dealer's rooms than I do artist alleys. Oh, okay. This so, is one yeah. of those shows that I've always been in the artist alley. Yeah. And I mean, you know, for what it's worth, I will try to save a dollar because obviously I do hand make it, so I qualify for yeah. that. Um, it depends on how difficult it is to get into the artist alley. So since every convention has a different policy, a different jury process, you know, first some are first come, first serve. Yeah. You know, in those situations, if it's if it's difficult for me or a pain in the butt to get into the artist alley, I'll just get dealer's room. So I'm more dealer than I am artist these days. Uh, but one of the obstacles we've run into is that people don't believe that me and him actually make everything because they look like a machine made them. Right. I mean, they that's a bit like of a compliment, yeah. but and it also, I have to be like, no, you know, look at this. This is my hands. Like, look at it. Well, it certainly helps that we can see you behind the booth making Literally some adjustments stuff out, yeah. and things. Yeah. And it's, it's obviously not just for show. Mm -hmm. These are things that you're making. But um, I'm happy to be at that level where people think that these are made by machines, you know? Yeah. And uh, other dealers have confronted me and said, why don't you go to China and have these designs made? Yeah. Why don't you have them mass produced with the machine? And I'm like, I don't, I'm never going to do that. 
<laughs> we're, gonna, we're a small business. Yeah. We want to stay small and own it all. There's a lot of complications that come along, especially since a lot of this is um, inspired by existing media. Mm -hmm. You would probably have to do a lot of licensing things if you're yep. doing well, it. Yeah, well, and what, you, what the bigger concern is when you go to that level of manufacturing is that the, it's going to go out the back door, too. Yeah. So it's coming to you, but just as much as it's coming to you, it's going to somebody else. Yeah. I can control the quality. I can control the consistency uh, by doing everything myself, and I'll, I'll do that forever. You know, if whenever we needed to expand over the last couple of years, we just bring on more people. Yeah. Um, so I assume you also sell the hats online? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you find that people are finding out about you about shows and then... Uh, purchasing things online if they didn't purchase at the show, or are people just discovering you online? Uh, a little like, bit of just both. From searching in general. A little bit of both. I mean, we've sold to so many countries that there was no way we could have possibly yeah. reached that uh, with our normal, you know, convention schedule. Sure. But um, what we see a lot the last couple of years—a surge in sales after shows and that it, sort of thing. Well, it's exactly one pay period later. Yeah. So they, they max out the credit card or they max out their budget <laughs> at the show. And usually they'll get a hat at the show. It'll just be they'll go home and then somebody will either steal it, they'll lose it, somebody yeah. will be yeah. jealous and Left want on one of their own. Or something. Uh, yeah. and, and that happens a lot. Like people steal these hats a lot. It's actually a huge problem. So, but one pay period later. You don't mean from the table. You mean from no, individuals. No, I, I mean people get them home. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then brother, so sister, adored. girlfriend, right. boyfriend, whatever, steals it. <laughs> it's enough to where I give these to everybody. This is the washing care instructions, right? Because these are actually sewn down and you can wash them. I had to put it on, on this because it happens so frequently. That's like one of the biggest pieces of feedback I got. Yeah, well, three months later, you might forget that, you, you know, you said how, how specifically to wash them, and mm -hmm. they just throw it in the washing machine, or the mom picks it up off the floor with yeah. the rest of the clothes. But we get, I mean, just because they're so kind of iconic, they have their own look, they get a lot of attention, good or bad, when you go out. Sure. Um, that just leads to more sales. Yeah. Um, so one thing that I haven't been able to discuss with other artists is... Um, sorry, we... We went on a bit of a tangent. I forgot where I was going with that. But, um, so I, I take it adoption at, at um, the convention has been good because you've been coming here for so long. Uh, oh, that's what I was going to say. So when customers are excited about uh, you producing a particular design of theirs and a year or two later you come back with that design, do you find that those people, if you run into them again, actually purchase the item? Because I know a lot of people... Customers will say, oh, well, if you had this, I would buy it, mm -hmm. but, you know, I'm not interested in what you have. And it's a very common dilemma for an artist to think, well, maybe I'm just not doing the right thing. Um, in your experience, if you're listening to customers and producing what you hear, you know, a few times or whatever, is that is that the right thing? Or are you mostly just going with your gut? Uh, well, you know, I'd say most of the designs that I've got here at the booth are actually my personal <laughs> interest. I would say it's either... It's probably 70% sure. my personal interest or our personal interest, and the other 30% is what customers have asked for repeatedly. Right. Now, with that said, when you do the circuit for long enough, so we're on our eighth year at a lot of conventions, wow. you get a reputation for being known to make quality pieces. So what that means for us is that when people say, oh, well, if you had this, I am pretty easy, easily able to convert that sale immediately by saying, I will make it for you when I get home. Okay. And, un, you know, and other people... And do you turn that into a line, like a skew, as someone... As uh, a, most of the time, no, because okay. there's so it's not enough demand. Commission. But, yeah. like, for, the, for this show, as an example, we've probably taken 40 or 50 custom commissions. And those wow. commissions are going to take a week to two weeks. I ship them to the people, and they are generally twice the price yeah. of what is here. People want more expensive, so harder in, in designs. In general, the hats are around 30? So uh, most of them are 25. Okay. So, But I'd say everything here is between 25 and 35. Uh, yeah. But I do come with some pieces that are really expensive, so we're talking about $50, $60 pieces right. for those collectors we were talking about earlier. They okay. want them, they have a budget for it, and they want instant satisfaction. You know, they want they want to take it home, or more importantly, they want to wear it around the convention all weekend. Yeah. 
So, speaking of wearing around the convention, a lot of people um, come here to cosplay. Are you finding yeah. that you're selling mostly to cosplayers or just everybody? Uh, not everybody. It's an everybody thing. <laughs> you know, we yeah. play we play this silly game because it's such a ramp. Like, people who buy our hats usually walk away. I'd say that 60, 70% of them walk away wearing it. Yeah. Uh, so, when we get off of work and we're exploring the convention and checking out things and maybe trying to have a little bit of fun, we start counting the number of hats that you sold yep. yeah yep because i mean it's it's fun and sometimes i play tricks on the customers i'll come up to them and be like that's a really good looking hat where'd you get that <laughs> see if they remember or you know like it's yeah. fun <laughs> okay and um what's been your experience at the convention in general um uh, have you found that i know staff this year has been incredibly responsive have you found that staff has handled the growth well um, I'm not trying to call them out or anything like that. Just generally speaking, uh, would you would you advise an artist who's considering tabling at a convention for the first time to try out Comic Con? No, I wouldn't say this is the appropriate place for you to start off. I'd say okay. go, sm it's just go too big. smaller yeah, yeah, yeah. because um, I mean, even just some of my neighbors here, you know, I I can see physically how much stock they have. They didn't yeah. bring enough. I mean, and that's a good problem to have. But come on, we want to maximize our profits as artists. So to do sure. that you really need to ramp up your pre-production and, and bring as much as possible. But of course you have to make an informed decision about what you're going to spend your time on right. and how you can you do that. You and... have to have some experience at the smaller shows. You have to get that feedback either from Etsy or from you know wherever you're selling to make those decisions about what to make. This is, a, I'd say, more of a medium tier convention. So once you've got some of your stuff figured out, maybe done yeah. two or three you small shows. You have a process shows. in place. You figure out if you need an yeah. assistant, you know how to handle crowds of people. That's right. Sort of well, this one is pretty busy and you know, everything's, staff's been great. Yeah. Uh, this convention in general is one of my favorites. Uh, I love how much space there is. It never feels super crowded anywhere, which is nice yeah. because that does affect sales in the artist alley and the dealer's room. Yeah, people I've been to conventions where it's just, just so packed that people are standing in front of your booth and not even looking. Mm -hmm. They just want to they right. want to move, they're, but they they're, can't. They're, yeah, we do a we call it cattle call <laughs> not, because not Comic -Con, because of course, you just but. you're just kind of walking and whenever the person in front of you is walking and you're not experiencing the booth, maybe you know the people who who would actually walk into their booth you can't even get in. So yeah. having wide aisles, we got 15 foot aisles over there, we got like 10 foot aisles over here, always a, a great good decision. They could have packed more dealers in here. For sure. They could have. I've heard people complain about that, actually. But that this is a great number of artists and dealers, in my opinion. Yeah, because the the le the fewer, as long as there's enough to draw interest, mm -hmm. the fewer the better, in yes. general. Because if, if the show just sold as many as booths they can. as they could, then it would hurt the sales of Oh Yeah, of that, everyone. that happened with KatsuCon uh, last year. Okay. They had a, a pretty big wait list for their dealer's room. And they opened up a whole nother third of the floor, added yeah. maybe a hundred dealers. And when your growth, as far as attendees, doesn't match up with that, everyone's gonna suffer a little bit. Everyone loses. Yeah. Everyone loses, and it's really an unfortunate situation. So it, it's a careful balance. Yeah. And um, I think it's more about curation on the con side than it is about numbers. Because absolutely. as long as everyone feels like they can find something they want, then yeah. everyone's happy. Well, they could have filled this room with just t-shirt vendors. But as far as I know, there's only two or three. That's yeah. an appropriate amount of t-shirt vendors for this show. Right. OK, and would you have any advice to an artist who's considering tabling at Comic-Con for the first time? Bring lots of stuff. Okay. Uh, I mean, I know it's really difficult to decide. Like a variety of things, or just make sure you have enough of every item to sell to many, many people? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you want to be prepared okay. with hundreds of pieces. Yeah. This is a large show. There's not a lot of um, questioning of price here. You know, and by that I mean, you know. No one's trying who, to haggle. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not something that happens here. Everyone is having a great time. So, yeah, just come prepared with as many pieces as you possibly can make. You know, there's not really a limit. I used to sell out the first couple years we did this because we wow. weren't at the level of efficiency that we are now. So yeah. we couldn't make as, you know, physically make as many hats. And there's nothing more frustrating wanted. than being, uh, uh, you know, Sitting at a con with half of your merchandise on Absolutely. display. Absolutely, and that was before I could yeah. even convince them to, to give me money beforehand to pre to to get custom orders that I would send to them. Yeah. So it was just incredibly frustrating. 
I mean, you know, as far as I'm concerned, if you sell everything, leave. <laughs> Unless yeah. you can continue to convert the sales, you're wasting your own time. But yeah, bring a lot of stock, and um, I think that's it. Okay. Well, I hope you have a good Comic-Con. Thank you very much for talking to me. Thank you.